Hey guys, today I want to talk all about a really unique oddball aquarium fish different from the rest. Today we're talking all about the hatchet fish. Let's dive straight into the video. So there are a few different types of hatchet fish out there. So you have your common hatchet fish, also known as the silver hatchet fish. You also have your marbled hatchet fish, and there's actually quite a few others too. Today we're mainly going to talk about the common hatchet fish, the silver hatchet fish, which is the one you'll most likely see at the pet store along with the marbled hatchet fish. So let's uh, get over that confusing part of the video. And with that being said, hatchet fish originate from South America. Um, they're well known to be in the Amazon and lots of rivers with tannin stained water. So in that case, you want to put a few leaves in your tank and uh, have some black water. They do best in a black water tank and uh, most aquarists have had the most success with uh, keeping hatchet fish in tannin stained water instead of clear water. So that means that hatchet fish do love a really low pH. They can go all the way down to four to seven. So you don't actually want to keep a high pH with these fish. Any over seven, they're not going to do the best. So the lower the pH, the better. So hatchet fish don't get too big. They get to about six to eight centimeters. So you will need a tank no smaller than 20 gallons. But these guys like to be in groups of about four or more, so I recommend a 30 gallon or bigger. They love lots of surface area and they are known to be hanging out at the surface of the tank almost all the time. So in that case, you're gonna need to make sure you have a tight lid or else they're gonna jump out. So these fish are really good jumpers and if you do have little gaps in the tank or large gaps for sure, you're gonna have um, hatchet fish jumping right out of the tank. So in that case, I highly recommend you seal the tank. If you do have gaps you can't really fix, what you can do is you can put fish food over them, especially those feeding holes. Fish food are great. And then if you have those tiny little slits in that case, they won't jump out of that. So you'll still have air going into the water. These guys do like flow at the surface, but they do fine with slow moving water. As long as you've got a nice aerated tank, then they're gonna be just fine. Now these guys are quite peaceful. They do get a bit finippy or other fish can tend to nip at uh, the fish's fins, but it all depends on your experience. When you have a nice big group, you usually won't see much aggression at all in the hatchet fish, but if you do have aggressive fish or fin nippy fish like tiger barbs or danios, then they're definitely gonna have a go at the hatchet fish, even though they're always at the surface of the tank. So in that case, uh, you're gonna wanna keep the hatchet fish with peaceful community fish and fish that don't get much bigger than the actual hatchet fish. I recommend fish like gouramis, live bearers, catfish, any bottom dwellers basically fine with the hatchet fish as bottom dwellers won't come across the hatchet fish as they inhabit completely different areas of the tank. These fish do love a heavily planted aquarium. They do love live plants compared to your fake plants and they'll show more natural colors. You want to keep it as simple as possible with the hatchet fish but you need to make sure though you have lots of surface area so that they'll be happy and they'll be able to swim around a lot. Don't have too many floating plants just so they can get to uh, the very surface of the water and they'll just be fine. So the hatchet fish won't really have an easy go at fry swimming around in the tank if you're breeding live bearers and that sort of stuff but it is best to take precautions and make sure that you do have floating plants and uh, hiding places for any fry if you do have breeding going on in the tank. Now hatchet fish are quite individuals, so they won't really go mucking around other fish's territorial breeding sites. So in that case, uh, you shouldn't worry too much as they'll almost always be at the surface. Now these fish do have quite small mouths, so you're gonna wanna feed the hatchet fish meaty foods that uh, float at the surface. You want your flakes or floating pellets. So, um, they won't really go to the bottom much. It all depends how deep your tank is. You can also feed these fish baby brine shrimp, mosquito larvae, and all sorts of live and frozen foods that will be able to fit in their mouths that aren't too big. Now, to sex these guys is quite hard. So really, it hasn't been proven on how to properly sex these fish. So you're just gonna wanna have a big group and they'll pair off or usually the females are more plumper and uh, rounder than the males. So you wanna bear that in mind. And once they do get fully grown, it should be a bit easier to tell but yeah, you're just gonna have to wait and be patient. Now these guys are egg scatterers, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you have lots of live plants and all sorts of nooks and crannies throughout the tank so that when these guys do scatter their eggs, that uh, the eggs are going to get out of any fish's reach. With that being said, these guys do require a bit of conditioning 
when you want to breed these guys. They are a bit hard and most people don't have much success breeding these fish in captivity, but if you do want to have as much of a high chance as possible, you want to have tannin stained water, very low pH at about five to six, put in some almond tea leaves or whatever you want. And you'll also want to condition these fish with mosquito larvae. So whatever larvae you find in your local creeks in summer is usually what a hatchet fish would eat in the breeding season up in the Amazon and those sort of riverways. So in that case, you're going to want to feed them mosquito larvae a lot. This is really going to trigger them spawning. And there's also other special chemicals, I guess, out there that do help trigger the fish. But hormones are also another great way to trigger the fish, which is kind of pretty hard to buy. So it's really a breeder's secret at fish farms. But um, yeah, otherwise you can just have the fun of keeping hatchet fish. They're really good, fun fish, and they are such an oddball compared to most of your other fish. The body structure is unique. They're not the hardest fish to take care of. I recommend the common or marbled hatchet fish if you are a beginner and you want a fish that's uh, level up from your gouramis, live bearers, or barbs. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a few new things. And I hope if you were considering on getting the hatchet fish that you are gonna get some now, just as long as you got the right requirements, a tank uh, no smaller than 30 gallons and uh, a temperature from 22 to 26 degrees Celsius. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. It's about 74 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. They do love the tropical temperature keep the parameters stable for the best success, especially in breeding, and good luck with your hatcher fish out there. Thanks so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video.